So the uh, you know once you have the dot cube files for the molecular orbital generated through any of the softwares, any of the DFT softwares or you know molecular chemistry or whatever you want to call it, then all you need to do is you need to click on the file, the dot cube file containing the molecular orbitals, and then drag them onto the JMOL window, and you'll be able to see something. And maybe you won't be able to see anything but in some cases you know you will see a good molecular orbital but in case you don't then don't worry it is normal what you need to do is you need to right click on the you know jmol window and open the console or you can even you know open the console by going to the file and clicking on console so the you know major advantage with jmol is that it allows you to script and you can you know basically um, write great scripts such as you know you can write a script to calculate the center of mass or design something and you know even tweak some of the default features like the molecular orbital drawing so once you're in the console like in a regular terminal console if you press the up arrow key then you will be able to see what was the previous command so when we dragged over this file over to the jmol window then jmol used this command to draw this surface what we are seeing here but it's obviously not correct so first of all you should never you know just um, use this command directly to uh, load up a cube file because it will only draw the molecular orbitals and not the atoms but if you you know go ahead and open the cube file using a text editor then what you'll notice is that it is not only you know containing the molecular orbit information but essentially the in the starting it also contains the atomic coordinates so basically one means the hydrogen atoms and six means the um, carbon atoms and then there are the coordinates for all these atoms in atomic units or bores and then you have some information about the grid over which the molecular orbitals are plotted and then the value of the molecular orbitals or the wave functions at the uh, at the grid points so this is basically a what a cube file looks like so when you use a cube file you should also be able to see the atoms so what we are going to do is coming back to the jmol console so we are going to press the up key and which will basically help us get the address of this you know cube file and then we will delete all this stuff like i saw sort of sign red blue and write load over here so what will what this will do is um, it will load up the cube file but only the atoms from the cube file so it will load up the atomic model or the molecular model and then what you can do is you can you know go to press the up key to uh, you know see the previous commands in the history and then give a command such as isosurface sign red blue and then the address of the cube file with an inverted commas so what this basically means is it will draw an isosurface which is essentially the molecular orbital in our case but even electronic densities which are in cube format can be drawn using the isosurface command so isosurface sign red blue basically means um, isosurface I already explained and then sign red blue basically means that the negative um, wave functions are drawn in red color while the positive wave function are drawn in blue color so if at some you know point in space the value of the wave function is negative then it will be you will see a red blob kind of surface around it while for positive values you'll see blue and then the address so this is basically self-explanatory so and now if you press enter you will see that something you know appears onto the atoms but not exactly what you call a molecular orbital but don't worry um, the the key to that is um, the different ways in which molecular orbitals are generated in different software so if i had generated these uh, you know using some software such as um, gaussian and or any of the software which you know uh, for molecular orbitals uh, which they what they do is they give the value of psi which is the wave function but what quantum espresso do, does is contrary to several other molecular programs is that it gives the value of psi square that is the square of the wave function therefore you know since wave function is already really small less than one at uh, a number of grid points so when you give uh, you know when you try to uh, you know calculate the psi square that is the square of the wave function then the values get even smaller so therefore jmol isn't you know uh, tuned to plot psi square it is more tuned to plot psi and since quantum espresso is you know 
generating size square values therefore it is uh, you know cutting off a lot of values so what basically jmol does is it uses a parameter called cutoff and you can change it so that is the good thing about jmol so although it is cutting off a lot of our wave function originally but you can change that and you know give this command cutoff and some value after it such as 0 0.001 and then space and then hit enter now what you can see is you can see really good molecular orbitals being drawn for the you know um, I believe it is the highest occupied molecular orbital for benzene or maybe uh, we can check it because I'm not really sure if I generated them correctly or not or rather I named them correctly or not so um, here it is um, let's see okay so yeah, actually th those are the LUMOs, not the highest occupied molecular orbitals. I'm not sure why I named them like HOMO, but that is actually LUMO, which is why I was getting rather confused and decided to check. So yeah, this is the LUMO. It doesn't matter what I named them because I'm probably, uh, I made a mistake while naming them, but yeah, so, <clears throat> sorry. So the this is how you will generate molecular orbitals on using jmol so the first thing is you load the cube file using the load command as you can see over here and then the address of the cube file within inverted commas and then you can use the command isosurface cut off and then the signs of the positive and negative paths and then the address of the cube file within inverted commas now one more thing that you can do is you can change the colors so it is not necessary to use red or blue you can use anything you want like green yellow and will work like that so now you are seeing a different view and you can even you know make these orbitals transparent by giving the uh, you know by adding <coughs> the keyword translucent and now you can see that the molecular orbitals are transparent or translucent and you can see the atoms as well and you can even change the translucency by giving the uh, you know parameter or keyword translucent and then a value between 0 to you know 1 so 0 0.5 basically is like 50% translucent so um, let's see if we make it 0.7 so as you can see now it is even more translucent let's see if we can make it even more 87 yeah so it is getting even more translucent and you can also instead of using these you know point values you can also give values on a scale integer values on a scale of 1 to 10 so in that case um, 9 will correspond to very uh, transparent and then 1 would correspond to a very not transparent so um, yeah so this is how you would be using the isosurface command of jmol to you know plot the molecular orbitals or visualize them and also let's take as an example um, some calculation I did with turbomol and um, where is it okay so here it is so in turbomol if you um, plot the molecular orbitals and then just drag the you know cube file over the jmol window and yes um, click on yes when you when it asks you if you like to replace the current model so yes then what you'll notice is it has the previous atomic uh, you know structure or molecular structure as well as the orbitals um, from uh, you know read from this cube file so of course what you should do is you should first of all um, delete this particular isosurface by giving the command isosurface delete and you should also like get rid of this molecular structure so in order to get rid of this um, as I already told you use the command load instead of isosurface so um, the command um, or rather the address of this particular you know uh, molecular orbital is this and we'll just you know use load in front of it rather than isosurface so write down load and then the address and then hit enter so what it will do is it will load up the coordinates from this particular cube file and then now you can use the command isosurface with the address of this particular cube file and also signed red blue but now what you'll notice is even if I don't give you know 
the the cutoff it is still reading the molecular orbitals in a pretty good fashion and considering that it is a very low lying molecular orbital it is correct and it is reading it correctly and if you want to plot the you know the lumo as we did in the previous case then you should load up this one that is the 22nd orbital yeah and yeah it is you know as you can see this time we are able to load it correctly even without specifying the cutoff now the reason why this is happening is um, and also you you are noticing that this time I don't have to give the load command and I'm just dragging them over here and when I press the up key it just gives the isosurface command it is currently loading all those now this is happening because uh, since all of these cube files are generated for the similar structure or the same exact same structure therefore um, you know the coordinates are still remaining the same and therefore if you only plot the isosurface then that also you know looks correct on the structures and the reason we don't have to give the cutoff uh, is because uh, you know this uh, uh, software plotted the psi that is wave function value which were between you know 0 to 1 so they are considerably larger than psi square so that is why the cutoff is you know pretty high and jmol is able to use its default cutoff to display everything although you can still play with the cutoff and like use 0 0.1 and now you can see that um, the molecular orbitals are significantly inhibited and also one more very important thing that I should mention here and I should have mentioned before was uh, you can even also plot only the positive and the negative um, contributions to the wave function so in order to plot only the positive wave function you can use the command like um, so what you'll do is you'll get off this sign red blue because you're only going to be plotting the you know positive or the negative part and then uh, since point 0.1 is too high we'll use something like 0 0.05 and we will use a plus sign over here so what this will do is it will only plot the molecular orbitals greater than plus 0 0.05 so we'll get only the positive molecular orbitals so as you can see we are getting only half the molecular orbitals as we are getting in the previous case and then you can also plot the negative contribution separately by using the command isosurface cutoff minus 0 0.05 and this time you will notice you are getting the other half of the molecular orbitals which are negative so this can be useful um, also if, for your research papers if you want to do or plot them separately and also with jmol you can change the color of the background to like white so that they look a little bit nicer you can you know increase the um, jmol window size and then right click over here and click on file and um, go to export and export is it as a PNG image or a POV ray image and POV ray images are you know um, then uh, to get the image from the POV ray you will have to use the software POV ray which I'll probably make a video about and then you can even export these as 3D models for use in external programs like Blender so you can even 3d print out these molecular orbitals models or you can use the blender program to you uh, you know create even more stunning or graphically um, more higher quality uh, molecular orbitals for research papers if you export these as a 3d model and import them in blender so that is pretty much it and you can also right click here and click on surfaces and click here to make them translucent and also you can right click again on the window and then click on surfaces and click here to make it opaque back so that is pretty much everything you need to know about plotting molecular orbits and also make sure or remember that same things do apply for density as well so if you're plotting electron densities or charge densities then and have a cube file with you then everything should be pretty much similar to what we have discussed in this tutorial and you can you know there are a lot of functions which I've already discussed in another video so you can have them spinning or maybe just you know plot both the molecular orbitals at once and uh, make them translucent and you have a nice little you know thing going on here 
So that is it. That is how you use shame or to plot cube files containing molecular orbitals or electronic densities. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. In case you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day.